Hey guys, today I want to show you one of the ways you can paint a rock. Many of the rocks that you see don't have one single baseline color. A lot of them have multiple colors integrated into their structure, going in various patterns that sometimes merge together and at other times are completely separated. There are also times where you see various spots or patterns on the rocks that are much brighter than their baseline colors. There is a way to do it that can be made easy and I hope that what I'm about to show you can help. The color palette I'm using here involves mainly these three colors, phthalo blue, burnt umber, and titanium white. For the darker parts, I'm mixing the brown and blue together. I'm not using black in this painting because it doesn't transition well with the rest of the colors, and I want to have as rich of a color scheme as I can here. This painting will also have elements of green in it, but even with that, I'm mixing it in with these other baseline colors. One point I'm going to keep emphasizing here is to have as much variety of color as possible. I'm starting off painting the baseline color here in a medium value. I'm being somewhat spontaneous with the overall mixing so that the intensity of the color will slightly vary as I keep painting. I'm using a medium sized round brush, something that can spread the paint quickly onto here. Once I finish that, I start painting the major areas of where the dark and light areas are going to be. I'm not concerned about the neatness of anything just yet, but am getting a basic framework of where the main color values are going to be. The light is going to be coming from the left, and so I'll be making sure that the way I paint the values will indicate that. This rock will have some rough textures along with some more smooth areas, so notice how this part here won't have much shadow in it, but instead I will eventually put lots of various color and very light textures into it. Spread with every word that I've said. So once I get a comfortable amount of this basic framework, I then start to colorize this rock. In this part, let's focus on the multiple baseline colors of the rock. Don't think in terms of 3D here, but just in terms of getting multiple colors spread throughout this rock. I'm using some desaturated orange hues here, and I'm going to integrate them into this rock. I switch over to a smaller brush and start to spread out these colors. I'm also altering the color and value of this mixture as well, so that some parts will be lighter and some parts darker and with a redder mixture of it. Variety of color is key here and this principle will apply to everything else. As you're trying to integrate these colors here, make sure that you use a variety of pressure with the brushing. After using your fresh paint mixture on here, you can feather in some of the edges with the dry brushing so that some of these patches of color can transition much easier alongside each other. And this also helps a lot with the transparency as well, so that you can see some of the layer underneath what you have painted. Okay, let's take a break from that and work on some more of the light and shadow. Let's start to think in 3D again. This right side of the rock will have a smoother and flatter section. So let's establish that over here real quick. Nothing too complex, just enough to establish an idea of what's going on over here. Now let's finish off the colors of the rock here in the bottom right and move on to the next stage where we start to add more complex light and shadow. But first let's see what we have so far. We have an already well established rock here and it has a good amount of color and shadow already. But now let's dive deeper and add some more intricate details to it. I'm switching over to a light gray mixture here and I'm going to be focusing on the light and shadow of the rocks. I have enough color established on here, so now I'm going to paint the textures of this rock, which will vary in many different ways. I think the easiest way to think about this while you're painting is thinking in terms of 3D. I know I've been mentioning this over and over again, but as you paint, picture the way the indentations in the rocks go in and out, and their shapes interact with the light source. I'm using various mixtures of desaturated color here. Some will be more brown, some will be more aquamarine, and so I'll be alternating with the values here, just for the sake of variety, which is key here. I'll spend some time establishing all the light areas here first. Okay. 
Okay, let's take a break from painting the light parts and start painting some shadows. I'm using a variety of dark hues here, alternating this dark mixture in various versions of brown. Sometimes I'm mixing in a small amount of green, blue, or even both. As long as the color is pretty desaturated, it would go well with the earthen colors going out over here. So as I'm painting this part, I notice how in some areas I'm painting the shadows adjacent to the light part. There will be some spots on the rock where there are dimples where it shows off the rough texture here, and so just make sure to keep the brushing short and small. Another thing to pay attention to is your method of brushing. When you have the fresh mixture on your brush, you could have a more pronounced and bold brush stroke on there, especially when painting larger clusters. But as you keep brushing, you could keep using the same mixture so that as it gets drier, you could gently dry brush the remainder to create a transition effect. So if you can't tell already, I'm kind of rotating what I'm doing here. Now I switch back to painting the highlights. I think it's a good idea to do this, at least this is what works for me, so that I get a sense of how it's turning out so far. So as I go back and forth with painting the highlights and the shadows, I'm picturing what the edges look like and how far they come out. And of course, the further something sticks out, the more shadow it's going to cast. Also, don't forget to vary in your values as well. Some highlights won't be as bright as others. One mistake I noticed that many beginners make is that they paint too many indentations of the rocks too round. It's okay to do that sometimes for a variety, but make sure to pay attention to the shape of these patterns of highlights and shadows. Make some of them more jagged and angular, and some of them could be a more solid shape. It's really easy to get carried away with painting the same thing, especially when you're kind of on a roll and keep painting patterns, but just keep paying attention to what you're doing. This part will by far take the longest, and so take your time with this. Painting the colored surface was the easy part, so just remember to kind of have a picture of the end result in mind. You're not only painting here, but in a way you are sculpting something into real life. Also, remember to use the dry brushing in some areas to create easier transitions. Okay, let's do some work in the section where the rock surface is relatively smoother. Even if that's the case, you still need to add more textures to it. But this time, keep the values close to each other so that not too much shadow sticks out. So now you can see I'm pretty far into painting this rock. You can see that every square inch of this rock has some variety of color and value. Painting realistic rocks involves paying close attention to not just the large parts, but also the small parts. Notice how even inside the darker parts where the large shadows are, you still have indentations and highlights. So here in this final part, I'm going over any areas that I can break down even further with more detail, seeing if I can break down any color patterns into smaller clusters. I'm also adding a few more color highlights here and there, just in case I overdid any monotone color schemes where I may have taken away too much color from the first layers. Anyways, I think that's it. Let's see what we have. This is just one example, however, as rocks do come in a huge variety of shapes, size, texture, and color pattern. This is one way of painting it, and of course, some rocks can be painted easier. Stay tuned for more videos like this. And if you're interested, check out my tutorials on how to paint things that go along with rocks, like the rest of the landscape. If you made it to the end, thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.